Well, it's good to be here. I've, some people ask me, why am I, why am I here? Uh, I've always wanted to come to this area, and it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, but the other reason is I wanted to share uh, a little bit about the Wyoming experience with you all, with the idea that perhaps, just perhaps, out of the experience that I've had in working with legislators and other people in Wyoming, that you can use this information and experience in perhaps getting your own legislation and rules in place in, in uh, Washington or Idaho or wherever you may be. But Wyoming is a very interesting place right now for blockchain. And it's a very interesting place. Not as interesting as this uh, neighborhood is for uh, slideshows, but we will. I'm going to just briefly go over what prompted Wyoming to act. Um, I don't know why it's not showing up here on the screen. Um, but we'll go over it. Uh, some of the new laws that are uh, being discussed in the uh, state of Wyoming and uh, some of the things that are actually in place right now and how you can potentially use them. Uh, just to give you a little background on why Wyoming has uh, become the, maybe I'll just have you <laughs> Okay, yeah, let's go to the next slide. Uh, there's an interesting story as to why Wyoming has all this blockchain legislation and it has to do with uh, the story of Caitlin Long, who you may have heard of. She is a, you can see her picture there, number three there. Um, she is a uh, University of Wyoming graduate, uh, Wall Street veteran, worked at Morgan Stanley, uh, somewhat libertarian, uh, very involved in uh, cryptocurrency, did very well trading Bitcoin and other instruments and uh, a stern supporter of women's causes in Wyoming. She wanted to fund a women's uh, computer engineering scholarship at the University of Wyoming with digital currency. The university was very happy to hear about it. And then she received a call from the Wyoming Attorney General saying, if you transmit your digital currency into the state of Wyoming, you are committing a felony because the money transmission laws do not license you to transmit funds into the state. And that's absolutely ridiculous. So she took it upon herself to you know, gather up people to uh, work to change the laws of the state of Wyoming to make it a cryptocurrency friendly and blockchain friendly jurisdiction. Uh, it's, it's, been a, it's been an interesting ride, uh, to say the least. And uh, we have several pieces of legislation that uh, have been enacted. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Uh, we have several. Let's see. This should work. Let's not think the battery would be dead or something. All right. Anyway. Anyway, the, the legislation in Wyoming was actually some of the first that was actually enacted in the, in the United States to address certain issues within the blockchain community. Uh, there are several issues that were uh, brought about uh, to the uh, legislature last year. I was involved uh, with the coalition in uh, speaking with people in the Wyoming House of Representatives and the, How and the Senate in terms of putting doc, in terms of why the laws needed to be in place. And Wyoming looks at this as a more, from a more global standpoint. Not only do they want, did they want to facilitate blockchain, uh, they wanted to be a blockchain friendly jurisdiction much along the lines of uh, say how South Dakota is for uh, trust business. They want to be the South Dakota of blockchain. 
And uh, these, this legislation was the first step in uh, putting that uh, going forward. The legislation generally, for those, are any of you familiar, uh, how many of you are, all, are familiar with what's in place in Wyoming right now? Just any, anybody else? We have a couple people? Okay, great. I think, you know, the first thing that's in place right now in Wyoming is the utility token exemption. There is a utility token exemption that is within the state of Wyoming, which you uh, essentially claim by filing a form with the Secretary of, with the, uh, Secretary of Banking that says that you are uh, declaring your token to be a utility token. And that essentially means that you, the company, is not undertaking any, effort, any affirmative efforts to put that uh, token on an exchange. Uh, you uh, agree that the token has or will have some utility and that you're not selling it for investment purposes. That was a big deal because, you know, there are people in the blockchain community who are developing tokenized solutions that aren't necessarily monetized. For example, the healthcare industry or the insurance industry where you've got things moving and uh, people want to develop those sorts of things and have them work. So that's a big deal. The other thing is the money, are the uh, security exemptions that work within the state of Wyoming. The state of Wyoming actually exempts transactions uh, in digital assets, and those you know there are definitions in Wyoming law for the digital assets. Um, those uh, you can trade that you can trade with another Wyoming resident free of money transmitter laws. And you can also do that uh, free of the securities laws. So there's a very, you know, the state has gotten the idea that there's going to be a ecosystem, there's going to be an ecosystem that's essentially going to be developing within the state for the use of this. Uh, there is a provision that uh, digital assets are personal property. That's a big deal. That means your cryptocurrency can't be taxed. Uh, Wyoming's a pretty low tax state to begin with. Uh, there is some conflict with the state, with the IRS code in terms of whether it's property or not, but it also depends on the nature of the token that you have. Is it a fiat substitute or is it you know, something in the, akin to a security? Uh, let's see, we can go to the next one. Let's see if it works. No, my, my clicker isn't here. Okay, number, let's just go to the next slide. Uh, while well, we're talking about that, um, there are uh, also things, there's also the provisions for a series LLC uh, that's, pro that's uh, provided, uh, that's obviously going to help you create different uh, vehicles. The series LLC, of course, you know, the LLC was actually invented in Wyoming in 77. They were the first state to do it. Delaware jumped on the bandwagon uh, and really took off and has been the center of incorporation. But if you look at the laws between Wyoming and Delaware, uh, they're actually the same, and if you wanted to save a couple bucks, you can incorporate in Wyoming and take advantage of the same laws. Uh, more importantly, you can also, when I say the same laws, uh, yeah, well, let's, let's get to corporate records in a second. But uh, the, the laws are actually very important because there is actually going to be a chance report that's going to be uh, instituted in the state of Wyoming, and in the state of Wyoming that actually adopts the laws of the state of Delaware. And before the computer went out, we had something up there on corporate records, and that has to do with the deal of having your uh, securities or uh, negotiable instruments on the blockchain. Uh, you can have proxy voting records, you can have shareholder records, you can have everything on the blockchain that you want, and the state will recognize it as a valid operating record of what's going, of, of what you're you know, what create what your corporation is actually doing. Um, this has actually been further developed in some legislation that's pending before the legislature, which is sitting right now. One of the reasons I came here uh, is to talk about the pending legislation. All of this is very good, and we've heard a few people allude to it in the past, uh, and some people here today, about the difficulties with banking. Wyoming had this very good idea that if we had all these laws in place, people would come to Wyoming, open up businesses, you know, the, you know, the 
happy trail of economic progress. What they learned is that no matter what laws you have in place to facilitate blockchain business, it's not going to come unless people can bank. And that's because you can't pay your employee withholding, you can't pay social security tax, you can't pay your bills on a regular basis unless you're carrying money in a sack or a thumb drive going to some bank in a very obscure place. Uh, not to mention the fact that uh, banks, not only in Wyoming, but practically all over, with maybe a couple of exceptions, will not bank blockchain business. Uh, as you may know, there was Operation Choke Point that uh, uh, FinCEN put in place to deal with everything from gun manufacturers to terrorism. Somewhere in the mix of that, blockchain got involved. So what you find with a lot of people is people will open accounts to learn that they're, you know, the bank will ultimately learn that they're involved in a blockchain-related venture, and their accounts will be shut down within two to three weeks. The state of Wyoming believes that that's just not a way to conduct business. So what is going on right now, and what I'm very involved with, is banking legislation in the state of Wyoming that is creating uh, special, special purpose depository banks specifically to handle blockchain business. These are going to be very different banks than what you might ever see in your neighborhood. These banks are going to be 100% reserved, just like the banks were in 1790, meaning that what goes in the bank goes out of the bank. It also means that the banks aren't lending any money. They're merely facilitating basic banking. They're also going to have a window to the Fed. And more importantly, up for a vote tomorrow afternoon, and I'm very excited about it, uh, is an amendment to the banking bill, which is going to provide for the custody of digital assets using the model of the Qualified Custodian Rules in the Investment Advisors Act of 1940 as the basis of regulation. This is going to provide a uh, solution for people who are looking to find a jurisdiction within the United States to establish their blockchain business and to, con and to you know, attract employees. There are other things that uh, are in the blockchain bill uh, coming up with the legislature in the next few weeks. There is a regulatory sandbox which is being uh, enacted uh, that is almost unanimous. This is uh, a mechanism by which people can approach the banking commissioner uh, and essentially receive a two-year waiver of specific laws to enable them to operate a business that potentially has beneficial effects on the financial community and the people of the state of Wyoming. One of the things I know here in Washington that, uh, I think, where was it? I was, just, I was at a, an event in Seattle, I guess, last year, and the, Wy uh, the Washington banking commissioner was present. And he was kind of saying, well, you know, we, we were kind of laughing at Wyoming. You know, well, they're, you know they're, they're enacting all this law, but who wants to go to Wyoming? You know, but Washington is proud of its banking regulation. And from what I understand and from what I've done with my own clients, Washington's banking regulation is somewhat burdensome. But the good thing is here is that uh, with Wyoming banks, these, non, these special purpose non-depository banks, people from all over, not only the United States, but outside the United States, will be able to bank blockchain business and also custody blockchain assets. And the fact that these are banks rather than trust companies you know, gets rid of the whole uh, doing business across state lines issue. So it's a very exciting time. Uh, there's also some uh, blockchain developments in terms of putting property on the blockchain, property title. Uh, Teton County, where Jackson is, is already engaged in a pilot uh, using the resources that uh, the fellows at Overstock.com have provided. Uh, there are tokenization uh, provisions for the uh, safe harbor 
if you will, to establish security token vehicles in Wyoming without taxation. Uh, also, the establishment of uh, privacy trusts where people can put their, you know, can create likenesses, names, personal information, and have those held in a trust vehicle under Wyoming law. So what does this all mean for you in the state of Washington or the state of Idaho? What this means is that, you know, these laws and regulations, um, these laws and regulations didn't just come out of the mouth of a legislator because a legislator suddenly decided that this was a really good idea. This was a grassroots effort that was undertaken by a, a group of concerned people, people who had uh, industry needs, people who had a desire to develop blockchain business in a legitimate way, and people who generally wanted to help the state of Wyoming diversify its economy, which by its nature at this point is not very diversified. So uh, it's very exciting and a very interesting time. I know for the mining community, one thing I forgot, let me, before I conclude. The mining community, uh, one of the things that's interesting in Wyoming is the uh, bill that's going to allow the, the utilities to negotiate with mining companies without public uh, utility commission approval. I know Wyoming's got some uh, low power rates, probably not as low as you have up here. Uh, you know, but they do take advantage of some of the uh, federally subsidized power rates with some of the utilities they have. So that's going to be an interesting thing as well. Uh, clearly, the banking thing is a big deal. Maybe if there was a story in Forbes on it last week. Uh, it's been interesting to see how that bill's gone through. Uh, it has been, uh, it's gone through most of the committees unscathed, uh, but at each stage we've actually had uh, opposition from the uh, state banking uh, lobby. The banks themselves are concerned. And this is a lesson that you all have, I think, in terms of learning you know, what kind of opposition you would face in terms of dealing with people if you ever wanted to do this is that the, not, uh, the banking lobby in Wyoming has actually complained that they don't want these things to be called banks because they're afraid that their reputation is going to be sullied or, or diminished. You know, the same people that brought you the 2008 financial crisis and have a reputation somewhere below nuclear power plants and, uh, you know, are concerned, you know, I, I mean, it's, it, the argument is, is, is ridiculous. And then there's the whole issue that they've brought up about, well, these blockchain companies are nothing more than, than vehicles for fraud. And we're going to be, you know, these banks are going to be facilitating fraud and money laundering, which is somewhat hilarious because not, the KYC provisions that are in the bill are essentially four layers, <laughs> and they have to be audited quarterly by the banking commissioner. That's an addition to the approval process that the bank has to go through to actually open the, you know, to get the bank opened. And the bank has to have a substantial amount of capital. The banks have to be capitalized at five million. That's what the law is, says right now, but our informal conversations with the bank commissioner there suggest that the capitalization of the bank needs to be much larger. But uh, the latest thing that the bankers have come up with uh, knowing that these arguments have generally failed with the legislators, is now they're concerned, the latest means of opposing the bill, which I find, this is a new one on me, they're complaining that the name of the bill has bank in it, and that they want to change the title of the bill so people don't get confused, which essentially is a backdoor way of getting the legislation to start all over again, which nobody really wants. But it's an exciting couple of weeks in Wyoming, and uh, happy to answer any of your questions. Sorry about the presentation, but I'm happy. Come up to me. I'm happy to send you the slides or send you any, any information you want. Uh, you can go on the Wyoming Legislative Service website and generally pull up some of the drafts of the websites of the legislation. I have a couple of the drafts with me if you'd like to look at them. 
Uh, but uh, as you continue your journey in developing your community here, uh, hopefully you'll learn some lessons in, from what uh, the people in Wyoming are doing and what, what they've done in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. Yes? This is going to be fee based banking. Uh, the pot checks are going to have certain fee, you know, one fee, uh, wire fees, ACH fees. The custody, from what I understand, you know, mo Full disclosure, I work with a venture group that's trying to put one of these together. And yes, running the numbers on making a bank like this work is pretty tough. But you have to remember how much money is out there. I mean, the, the estimates that I've heard, that I've seen, is that there is about 30 to $40 billion of blockchain business to be banked. And even if we got 10% of that based through the fees and the custody you know, which would apparently be between, I don't know, 50 to 75 basis points. You're looking at a pretty decent business. Um, but that's generally how it's going to work. And, you know, there's, a, there's an assumption that people will pay a premium for the ability to bank. Now, if the law changes federally, you know, that model doesn't work. But, I mean, given where we are, I mean, we can't even... You know, we have our legislature open in the United in, in Washington right now. Uh, you know, I just don't see that changing anytime soon, and I don't see the banking lobby, you know, going away very quickly if that were to ever change nationally. The difference with Wyoming is, you know, these banks are state chartered; they're not federally chartered, and FDI insur FDIC insurance isn't a necessity. You have to get bonded, you have to get insurance, but by not having the FDIC insurance and not having OCC oversight, that's how you can be able to, that's how you're able to bank the blockchain business. It's, in addition, one of the things we had, I didn't go through on this, you know, just, be, just for all you, if you're ever curious about it, getting into the bowels of banking regulation is awful. <laughs> uh, there's actually revisions to the Uniform Commercial Code that we had to put in place. To, to deal with the banking laws, just how you uh, create a security interest in a digital asset. What is the asset that they're actually holding? Is it the key? Is it the address? I mean, you know, how, you know, what do they? What do you have? What do you have a lien on? I mean, we have we had to come up with all these definitions and uh, and make it work with the legislature and you know the attorney general. So, uh, you know, it's, it's it's an interesting project and. Uh, It'll be interesting to see where it goes. Yes. Anything that's a fiat substitute. I was working on behalf of people, yes. Kind of laughing at Wyoming. I want to say they were sneering at Wyoming. I mean, you know, there's a habit. Oh, it's just Wyoming. But, but one of the things about Wyoming that's interesting is it's a very small state, obviously, and it has a very small legislature. 60 people in its House of Representatives, 30 in its Senate which means you can generally get things through relatively quickly if you're working closely with legislative staff. The blockchain bills in their current state right now that are pending, those are about five months old. I mean, that's how quickly this stuff has gotten to, the, you know, has gotten to a head and to the floor for a vote. Uh, and it is starting to get more and more attention as people realize that this is a blockchain-friendly jurisdiction that is going to do everything it possibly can legislatively to get this business into the state. And you're just gonna see more and more, I think, inertia from, from some powers that be that, uh, that really don't want these things to happen, because I think ultimately other states will have to follow. 
Are they going to be able to do it as quickly as Wyoming? Absolutely not. It would be, it would, relative to the SEC, it would probably, it may well be viewed as a utility token if it's, you know, if it's uh, done for what, you know, if it's used, if it's not on an exchange and you don't put it on an exchange and you're using it strictly for the return of something for something else. Uh, one of the things that the SEC did and get themselves involved with, and I think you saw the little quote up there. Um, the SEC has gotten involved, got involved with the utility token exemption definition and essentially told the state of Wyoming that the only thing that the SEC views as a utility token is Chuck E. Cheese or a jukebox token. That's, that's, I'm, I, you know, that's, that's the state of, you know, our uh, securities regulation in the United States right now. Uh, I think it's a little more nuanced than that, and the state actually has, you know, taken the wherewithal to say, uh, you know, wh what it, where it thinks it falls in the utility spectrum. But all this is within the state of Wyoming, and you, know, you have to always remember why this is being, why, why, why is all this here? It's to develop an ecosystem that is to, you know, to encourage people to come to the state, transact business, create jobs, and um, for all of us who work with blockchain companies or service providers, you know, I, I, th I think there's a lot of benefit to a lot of the things that they're doing. Some of them cross state lines, some of them don't. But even where they don't, at least you have the ability to lean on a state regulation to say, okay, you know, state of Wyoming says I'm a utility token. Guess what, if you've seen drafts of some of the legislation in Washington, uh, that are kicking around on cryptocurrency and digital assets. Uh, they're using Wyoming's definitions. So, Thank you you're welcome. Oh, yes. Excuse me? Uh, on the banking side, uh, you know, there, there has been talk about the lack of competition or the impairment of the, I mean, the Wyoming banking community is relatively small. Uh, they're afraid that this is going to erode the general, I don't know, uh, veneer of credibility of the banks and that people, you know, like you and me, maybe, maybe not you, maybe you're doing better than I am, but I have a checking account you know, I don't, I don't know, I don't want my bank leveraging my money 10 times. And if it's, if I can pay somebody, you know, a little bit of money to write checks every month and not have to worry about that sort of thing, that's valuable to me. So there's an interesting, you know, dichotomy of, you know, these banks are also going to attract different businesses and different people, people who want to just know that everything that's going in the bank is going out. That's a perfectly good thing. Uh, underbanked businesses, uh, the firearms business, you know, because of Project Choke Point, gun manufacturers have been, you know, there's a talk about gun manufacturers using these banks. So, I mean, depending on where you feel, where that goes on the moral side of things, I mean, there's certainly discussions back and forth. But on the, on the negative side, one of the things, of course, that ultimately came up last year when people thought that Wyoming was going to just, you know, knock it out of the park, uh, behind the scenes, the bankers, the Wyoming banking community was actually saying, well, you know, now that you have all these cryptocurrency laws, there's going to be Russians marching down the street taking over our banks, and we'll have the Wolf of Wall Street sitting in Laramie. Uh, none of that ever happened. In fact, you know, the arguments that came about, you know, in terms of the credibility of the business community or frauds that were actually committed by Wyoming companies. Since this law has been enacted, there's been one Wyoming ICO that's actually been the subject of SEC scrutiny. 
And there's, from what I've heard, there's been over 2,000 digital asset companies formed in Wyoming since the law was passed. So I think that's a pretty good statistic. And really, I don't see the downside. I don't see any negative consequences to that. And neither do many of the legislators. Thank you. <laughs> I know I've been pretty heavy on the banking community in this, in this discussion, but we did have to frame the discussion to make it to uh, not attack the banking the banking industry at large. One of the things you have to realize is, you know, again, blockchain is on that hit list. It's on the Project Choke Point hit list. And, you know, if I'm running a bank, you know, am I going to run, am I going to have a crypto, you know, venture? Am I going to have a blockchain venture and deal with that risk and have, you know, expend my shareholders' money to do it? So the argument we actually had to come up with was trying to shift the blame from the banks themselves to the regulators in Washington. It really, you know, this, it really isn't the banker's fault that they can't bank these companies. Because if they do, they're gonna be dealing with OCC audits, they're gonna be dealing with FinCEN audits. You know, they're probably gonna get subpoenas from God knows who else. They just don't wanna bother with it anymore. And who can, you know, these banks are, you know, doing what they're doing and they do it well. But the state of regulation as it stands in the United States right now really doesn't help them handle this business. But this business is growing, so we have to facilitate it. So that actually drove, moved a lot of the legislators over. You know, turning into, you know, this really isn't a banker issue. This is really, you know, a heavy hand of Washington just making it really difficult for us to help people do business. And you, you turn it into a jobs, you turn it into a jobs discussion. That's what ultimately drove, you know, I mean, the two committees that's gone through, the bills have gone through this year right now. Uh, 13 people on the original uh, steering committee, uh, the bill passed 12 to one. Uh, the House committee last week, uh, you know, nine people uh, passed eight to one. So. Uh, you know, those arguments have merit, and apparently they work. And I think they work because they're accurate. <laughs> yes? One of the things that I did not put up on the uh, laundry list that's up this year is uh, the legal apparatus. Very good question. Uh, there is some language in one of the bills about the recognition of smart contracts as a matter of law. If they meet the definition, if they have the elements of a contract under Wyoming law, then they will be treated as contracts, which is a, you know, sounds a little silly, but what's the difference, you know, if I go to uh, New York, for example, my smart contract could be viewed as clickbait under the administrative rules of the state of New York. You know, Wyoming takes a very different view of that. Um, rules of evidence, you know, is a, you know, is a transact, you know, what is a blockchain transaction uh, a business record? I mean, is it, uh, you know, what are exceptions to hearsay? Things of like, things like that. You start getting into these really arcane issues. But uh, the way that the law, the way that the uh, state has evolved uh, in this area, that's the area that they're actually working on right now. And that's what this chancery court is actually going to do. It's going to provide not only is it going to be a corporate, a place for co the resolution of corporate disputes, but people in Wyoming, and especially the judiciary, actually envision this as being the place where blockchain law is actually going to evolve. Because this is the state that has all the regulations, and these are the courts that are ultimately going to have to interpret it. It's an exciting thing. 
I mean, I'm kind of, you know, I've been in Delaware Chancery Court. It's a great court. But I'm really excited to see what's going to happen with a blockchain venture, uh, you, know, deal, you know, two blockchain companies dealing with things in a court of law, uh, whether they even want to be, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know, arguably, you know, things are, you know, smart contracts or all that sort of thing. You're not supposed to be in court, I guess. But, uh, you know, humans are humans. We're going to disagree about things. Um, it's an interesting time, and that's one area they're going to have to look at. Thanks for having me.